Hey, what's up, everybody? Today we're celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Day. You know Martin Luther King Jr., the Christian socialist? Yeah, that guy. He should really be remembered for his anti-capitalism as an integral part of his anti-racism. So let's talk about that in this video. People like to make it seem like the big end goal of his vision was simply people of different races treating each other more kindly, and that's it. But that was just the very beginning of the first phase of the civil rights movement. And if King wouldn't have been assassinated so early, then we would have been even more familiar with the capitalism critiquing King. And his radical politics beyond racial equality is precisely why he was assassinated. James Baldwin said his fate was sealed when he attempted to release the black American struggle from the domestic context and relate it to the struggles of the poor and the non-white all over the world. I feel that we are in the midst of the most critical period in our nation, and the economic problem is probably the most serious problem confronting the Negro community. And I might say the most serious com uh, problem confronting poor people generally, and I don't want to be narrow about this, talking only about the black poor in our country, because I must be concerned about Puerto Ricans who are poor, Mexican Americans, American Indians, and Appalachian whites. And we are confronting a major depression uh, in the poor community. And I think the time has come to bring to bear the power of the direct action, the nonviolent direct action movement on the basic economic conditions that we face all over the country. King had said that his goal, after all, was the total, direct, and immediate abolition of poverty. One of his most famous quotes is, What good is it having the right to sit at a lunch counter if you can't afford to buy a hamburger? The movement was never just about how people of different races treat each other. Now, late in his life, King was more vocal about his anti-capitalism and his socialism, but he was always a socialist. When he was 23, he wrote in a love letter to Coretta Scott, I am much more socialistic in my economic theory than capitalistic. And he also said, capitalism has outlived its usefulness. And so if you're going to come out as a socialist, uh, the best place to do it perhaps is in a love letter. But he didn't go around calling himself a socialist or a leftist or anything like that, because for him, it was more about values and actual policies than it was about labels, even though he acknowledged he was more socialistic. In a speech in 1961, he was talking about the need for redistribution of wealth, and he said, call it democracy or call it democratic socialism, but there must be a better distribution of wealth within this country for all God's children. Also in a 1962 sermon called, Can a Christian Be a Communist? He ended up saying that a Christian cannot be a communist, but we must take into account the context of the time and the popular understanding of communism in 1962 was that of a violently anti-theistic ideology. King was actually influenced by communists and Marxists, but he understood the question, can a Christian be a communist? in 1962 was really asking, can a Christian be a Stalinist? And so he criticized the violence done in the name of communism and criticized capitalism and pushed for socialist policies all at the same time. Also, he was well aware, as were his communist colleagues, that it would be foolish for a person, particularly a black person, to call themselves a communist publicly because that would lead to the FBI investigating them even more than they already were. But I bring all this up because King stayed away from labels because with each label came a whole host of ideas that he couldn't 100% sign off on and he had enough to worry about with the civil rights movement. So in saying that a Christian couldn't be a communist, he was critiquing the Soviet Union, or at least the popular understanding of the very atheistic Soviet Union. And yet in the same sermon, he said, 
although communism can never be accepted by a Christian, it emphasizes many essential truths that must forever challenge us as Christians. Indeed, it may be that communism is a necessary corrective for a Christianity that has been all too passive and a democracy that has been all too inert. Communism should challenge us to be more concerned about social justice. However much is wrong with communism, we must admit that it arose as a protest against the hardships of the underprivileged. Then he later said, We must admit that we as Christians have often lagged behind at this point. Slavery cannot have existed in the United States for almost 250 years if the church had really taken a stand against it. Segregation could not exist today in the United States if the church took a stand against it. And then he goes on to argue that this is exactly why Karl Marx and his followers went on to call religion the opiate of the people and led to the rise of this very atheistic communism. Because too often the churches talk about a future good over yonder and not concerned about the present evil over here. And then in that same sermon, he critiques capitalism too, saying, Too often in capitalism we've taken necessities from the many to give luxuries to the few. And then saying, Marx reveals the danger of the profit motive as the sole basis for an economic system. We must heed this challenge. So King actually pushed for a lot of the things that Marx pushed for and criticized a lot of the things that Marx criticized. But he always made it about values. Even saying, I will never be content, I will never rest until all of God's children can have the basic necessities of life. And he was well aware that this wasn't going to be accomplished through soft, sentimental love and sermons about vague equality, and that's the version of MLK that has been watered down in our modern times. King agreed with JFK when JFK said, Those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. And King was fully prepared for the potential of a violent revolution if America continued to make a peaceful revolution impossible. And I really love this quote right here. When he addressed the Southern Christian Leadership Council, he said, One of the greatest problems of history is that the concepts of love and power are usually contrasted as polar opposites. Love is identified with the resignation of power and power with a denial of love. What is needed is a realization that power without love is reckless and abusive, and that love without power is sentimental and anemic. Power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice. Justice at its best is love correcting everything that stands against love. So, I agree with Martin Luther King Jr. and his socialistic tendencies, and I also understand that he didn't use the label for one so that he wouldn't make his life even more dangerous than it already was, but also because I believe he really understood socialism as simply what Christians were supposed to be doing as Christians. So from Martin Luther King Jr.'s theological perspective, calling himself a Christian was affirming socialism. And I dream of a world where everyone would understand that that's what it means to be a Christian too, where one would assume socialism out of anyone who would dare say that they follow Jesus of Nazareth. And today, the only reason people even use the label Christian socialist for themselves, like me, is similar to why people even use the label socialist for themselves. Because we live in a society where we live in so much wealth and progress that we are ready to transition into socialism. But the small group of people that significantly benefit from capitalism are doing whatever they can to keep us here while the rest of us suffer and they push out propaganda that convinces people that there is no other way and they get people who significantly suffer from capitalism to be ideologues telling people that this is all we got this is the best system we can do and socialism is evil and that really is what liberalism is that's the ideology of liberalism of capitalist realism this is all we got so calling ourselves socialist and Christian socialists is a way of saying it's about time. We can do this. 
There is more than capitalism, and we will not rest until all people have the basic necessities of life. And for the Christians watching this, I want you all to realize that this is just the basic implementation of the kind of lives that Jesus called his disciples to. And I'll end this with this clip from a speech called Beyond Vietnam that Martin Luther King Jr. gave in 1967 at Riverside Church in New York City. And this clip right here, I've actually quoted a few times on this channel because I wish I could get every single Christian to believe these words that you're about to hear so that they may be open to an actual systemic transformation of our economic system. I am convinced that if we are to get on the right side of the world revolution, we as a nation must undergo a radical revolution of values. We must rapidly begin we must rapidly begin the shift from a thing oriented society to a person oriented society when machines and computers profit motives and property rights are considered more important than people the giant triplets of racism extreme materialism and militarism are incapable of being conquered a true revolution of values will soon cause us to question the fairness and justice of many of our past and present policies. On the one hand, we are called to play the Good Samaritan on life's roadside, but that will be only an initial act. One day we must come to see that the whole Jericho Road must be transformed so that men and women will not be constantly beaten and robbed as they make their journey on life's highway. True compassion is more than flinging a coin to a beggar. It comes to see that an edifice which produces beggars needs restructuring. Charity isn't enough. Helping poor individuals each time they pop up isn't enough. Being the Good Samaritan and helping individuals beaten on the side of the road isn't enough. We need a revolution of values and to transform our society so that we don't need so many charities and so many poor individuals in need and so many people beaten alongside every road waiting for someone to save them. Thank you for watching this video. May you celebrate our Christian socialist brother, Martin Luther King Jr. And make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash whoisdamon, where we stream and talk about this stuff in a more freeform and interactive way. And, of course, if you'd like to support me, you could support me on Patreon. So let me shout out my patrons before we go. Keith Wetzel, Blake the Bold, Stephen Harp, Ranger Jenny, Refined Your Scene, James Finlay, New Transcendentalist, Kristen Mouse, Mike Talkman, Peter John Blake, Mimi McGann, Kali, Onion, Keegan James, Tammy D, and everyone else. I appreciate you. If you want to support me, go check that out. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.